So I'd like to now introduce the second uh, speaker of this session and the penultimate speaker of the day, Alexandra Kishin, who's the co-founder of Loom. Uh, some of you may have already experimented with it outside. Alex is interested in integrating physical and digital spaces in a more fluid and meaningful way. He's been developing new contextually aware technology um, that's in touch with human nature and are capable of promoting intuitive human interactions that empower the individual. His work focuses on exploring and creating new ways of combining the digital and the physical world into one single entity. Um, he's got loads of previous outputs, bare blocks, uh, which is a tangible programming thing, uh, virtual reality, eating, taste works, uh, in-situ digital fun, Tomo, emotions from digital movement, Hammond, and digi uh, data sonification, Sona, so he's got masses of projects behind him. Uh, anyway, so today, Alex is going to talk to us about Loom. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so thanks a lot to Mahindra and Adi for inviting us today. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I'll just um, show you more about this project, which is actually outside as well. Um, so I think before before I start, um, if if you imagine my my fist to be a data point from a very complicated spreadsheet, right? What we do is that we use virtual reality, so a big thing that you have in front of your eyes, to kind of view this point from different angles. So now if you imagine two, I can do the same thing. But if you imagine 100,000 millions of points all around us, then this is, where, this is what Loom does. We transform data from very complicated spreadsheets into worlds that we can explore. And the idea is to, doing it this way, we can create a more intuitive and um, intimate relationship with the data. So we can better identify patterns uh, and better identify insights from it. So here's the little uh, video that's gonna basically show you what it looks like inside. So this is data from our uh, partner, Cambridge University. So as you can see, you can explore and manipulate data uh, in a very uh, int well, natural way. So the, this is data from the European Space Agency of neutrinos bending around the black hole. So this data comes in, you have to imagine, as like huge Excel spreadsheets, um, really massive data. And we don't do anything to the data, we just uh, drag it in. Um, this is data from um, a LiDAR scan, so the way that cars in the future will see the world um, is like this. So again, we take the raw data and visualize it this way. The idea also is it becomes a very natural way to collaborate with people around data sets. So here you see a scientist explaining his research uh, in the software. So yeah, we're, we're also well aware that not everyone will have uh, VR headsets today. So we've made it quite easy to generate these videos like this for people to then export into their presentations and, um, and show it to the, to the world. So um, yeah, we're, the data we're talking about is um, extremely complicated. So you have to imagine like highly complex multi-dimensional data sets. Um, and, and we're generating more data today than ever before in, in history. Um, but the way that we have to explore it is broken. Um, and the industry's kind of like solution to that problem is to throw a lot of people at it. So over the next 10 years, one in three STEM and business graduates in the US alone will go into business data translator roles. So basically is the, the, the solution is to, to, to throw three million graduates into making data finally understandable. But we realized in working, Alex and I were both working in VR for a long time, that this can offer a new perspective on data and um, a very natural way to explore it. So in a nutshell, we use virtual reality, so these big helmets, um, which hopefully in a few years will become much smaller, um, to explore data, visualize it, and collaborate around it. Um, so uh, we take the data in as a, a raw CSV file, so CSV is a traditional Excel format, so uh, as a raw file, and then we put it in, our algorithm is going to render it, and we use VR to view it. We can then export back as CSV to, go, to fit within the data pipeline or as videos um, 
uh, to be shared with the world. So I guess the main features which are quite interesting is that we can drag millions of data points instantly and visualize them. Uh, we have analytical features within this, which means that um, we can uh, perform some analysis <coughs> on the points in real time. So like nearest neighbor, you can imagine um, like clustering, but this is a bit technical, but clustering features. Um, and then what we're working towards is obviously to the idea of, of having like um, a Google Docs for data. So imagine I'm here with my data set around me and someone in MIT is visualizing this data set with me. Um, and then obviously sharing these insights as immersive presentations or videos. So um, uh, we take in the, the data, we offer new perspective just by the visualization, but obviously the analytics tools help find new insights and new discoveries. And then what we're building, what we're, we're, we're doing at the moment, and hopefully for the next few years, is to correlate loads of different data sets from loads of different sources in order to create new connections within your personal data sets. Um, so we fit, we have kind of three main areas of focus, which is around the exploration of the data, communication of the data, and obviously for public engagement purposes, this is quite a powerful tool as well. So um, the project started as, actually as an R&D project with uh, Cambridge University, um, where they were basically showing their data in, well, we, we built it with them initially, and they've uh, loaded their data in, and surprisingly, they could see things that they had never seen before in their data set, um, which, well, for us was, was really surprising and super exciting, to be honest, um, which kind of, uh, the more we, well, we built the features, which is now actually helping them predict, better predict the onset of arthritis and type 1 diabetes. Um, so this is a correlation of both visualization and uh, analytics features within the tool, which allow this to happen. Um, it's used also at the, the Hartree Center supercomputer in the UK um, to better visualize some of the data they generate uh, for their clients. So <laughs> you have to imagine highly complex data sets uh, visualized in this way. Uh, this is a minky well. We have this data set as well, but um, um, at the moment, we're showing uh, data from the British Library, actually. I'll get to that point right now. Um, we're focusing quite a lot, given our background with uh, Cambridge, on um, bio, biotech and life science. And so um, uh, this is um, another big area of focus for us. But um, so yeah, uh, we're focusing on these three verticals at the moment, which is um, quite relevant. And, Academia and education and life science are very much what we're focusing on at the moment. Uh, it's available for free uh, on Steam. So if you have a headset, you can download it right now. The idea and the reason why it is, is because we want as many people as possible to make really cool discoveries, just like the scientists at Cambridge have uh, um, over the last few months. Uh, so I guess what's interesting about this is that we're writing a, a paper with Cambridge actually at the moment to kind of uh, showcase these results uh, with the, ro the world and that uh, our alpha is available on Steam. So again, for free, you can put your data in and, and view it this way. Uh, so the team is just Alex and myself. Uh, we actually met uh, with the uh, British Library Labs at uh, Digital Catapult where we were incubated uh, over the summer. And... Um, and working a lot with Cambridge. Um, so yeah, uh, this is basically it. The, the, it's working outside, so if you want to have a, have a try, please um, feel free to come. Uh, I think what's cool about the data outside is that it's uh, been, it's data from actually from the um, uh, British Library um, Labs web archive. So um, uh, it's data we uh, generated by Gethin Rees, Dr. Gethin Rees from the labs. And um, it, it's actually quite interesting to see um, which postcodes have been the most referenced over the web uh, from uh, 1998 to 2010 and have a visual experience of this um, rather than heat maps of um, you know, traditional 
maps of London. So uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, I don't know if Q&A is now or not. But um, because we're, we're sort of on time now, oh, let's, wow. let's, do, um, let's do questions in the, in the foyer. Because then okay, perfect. Film work as you can All right, so yeah, come. If you have any questions, please come and find us. Uh, more than happy to answer anything. Uh, so thank you.